Hello, welcome. Welcome to our time together today. This is the Sunday in the month when all our fresh anointing international churches gather together with our global audience to eat at the same table. Our theme for today is titled Winning Inherited Battle. You heard me right. Winning Inherited Battle. And there are a lot of Bible based truths. And I want to share with you on this very important subject for today. Stay where you are. Get ready to be mightily blessed. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, take absolute control of our gathering today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. As we look at the subject of winning inherited battle, let me say that there is no one under the sound of my voice today who has not inherited something from generations gone by. Yeah. The inheritance may be negative, or it can be very positive. And sometimes it can be a mixture of positive and negative. Now, according to the law of inheritance, children can inherit both assets and liabilities from their parents. Children can inherit property. Or they can inherit property. When parents fail to defeat certain contrary forces, those forces will resume duty in the lives of the children when the parents are no more. The title of my message today very, very clear. We are dealing with the negative aspect. Of inheritance. We suggest that these negative inheritances can bring battle into our lives. Many of these inheritances they range from health problems to marital problems, financial problems, hardship problems, problems with success and life, the least is endless. They can be handed down for past 10 generations or even more. A couple of years ago, I met a very bright and talented young lady where I went to preach. She loved the Lord with all her heart. One of the most fabulous workers in that church. But this good lady was dealing with issues that were way beyond her time. We were able to trace the issue to her father. Then we probe a little bit deeper. And we traced it back to her grandfather. But we had to stop there because that was all she knew. Grandfather fought. Fortunately, he did not win. So we passed the battle over to our father. Our father fought. But he did not win either. So he handed the battle over to his daughter. I pray that God will deliver this lady. And no matter how long the inheritance has been in your own thing, I pray that it will start with you in the name of Jesus. Yes, we can win over those inherited battles, and we will win in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer for you, that God will use this son to give you permanent victory over our battles that are confronting you now. That you inherited, maybe from your dad or from your mom or from your grandparents. You know, it's funny. 
Maybe it's not. But you see, one would have thought that these battles will fade off once Christ comes into one's life. Unfortunately, it does not work that way. You see, salvation takes care of getting to heaven. It is sermons like this and teachings like this that will help you take care of living heaven here on earth. Broken you. Broken inherited battle. It is during sermons like this that God delivers. Now pray that we use this sermon again to deliver you and to rescue you. I think a very classic example of inherited battle is what we read in the life of Abraham. Yes, the Abraham that you know of. If I mention the name Abraham, the first thought that crosses your mind is, ooh, the father of faith. You are right. The second thought that crosses your mind is, oh yeah, that is the papa that had to wait and wait and wait before he had a child. You see, Abraham had an inherited battle that many people have today. It is the inherited battle of delay. In Abraham's case, his own delay manifested in childbearing. For many, Delay will manifest itself in many other areas. Maybe delay in getting married, delay in getting pregnant, delay in finishing school, delay in passing an exam, delay in getting approvals for one thing or another, delay in growth in children, delay in moving up the ladder of success at work, and even delay in getting results in examinations. That can go on and on and on. The list is endless, people. I pray for you that the Lord will destroy every battle that you are facing right now with delay in the name of Jesus. Now hear this. In the case of Abraham, delay in childbearing was actually handed over to him by his did you know that? I'm going to show you the scripture. The delay Abraham had in having a child did not start with it. It started with his father. But guess what? He, in turn, handed it over to his descendant until one of them put a stop to it. I prophesied to you as he listened to me, as he watched me today. That you, I mean you, you will be the one that will put an end to your family inherited battles in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Abraham. This will blow your mind. Genesis chapter 11. I'm reading in verse number 30. But Sarah was barren. She had no child. All right. Now, hey, Abraham had his first born when he was 86 years old. You got me right. The very first child he had at 86 years old. And that was not even the promised child. According to Genesis 21 5, he was 100 years old. That's another. For 13 to 14 years delayed before Isaac was born. Was delayed many years before Ishmael was born. Not a real promised child. But then he had to be delayed again for 13 or 14 years before the promised child was born. Inherited battle. 
I said I got some truth to share with you today. Please give me your rapt attention. But the problem of Abraham did not start with him. It started with his father, Tira. Yeah. Look at Genesis 11 and verse 26. And Tira lived 70 years and begat Abraham, Nahor, and Hera. How long did he live before he had a child? 70 years. Tira, the father of Abraham, was delayed till he was 70 years old before he had a child. Now that's very significant. Significant because all who came before him had their first children much early in life. Genesis 11.10, and the long list of those who came before Terah, and when they had their first children, let me take you through them. Genesis chapter 11, verse number 10. You got some great food coming your way today. Now, 11.10 of Genesis says, these are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begat a father two years after the flood. And that's where we begin. A father lived five and thirty years and he begat Selah. So he lived for thirty-five years and he had the first baby. Verse 14. And Selah lived 30 years and begat Eba. 30 years, he had his first baby. Verse 16. And Eba lived four and 30 years and begat Pele. 43 years, he had his first baby. Verse 18. Pele lived 30 years and begat Ryu. Verse 20. And Ryu lived two and 30 years. And begat Sirog. Verse 22. And Sirog lived 30 years and begat Nahor. And then in verse 24. And Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Tira, the father of Abraham. And look at the list. Look at the list. Look at the list. Begins with 10. Two years after the flood, Shem had his own child. Okay, then it goes to a father that was born. He had his own child at age 35. Sarah had his own child at age 30. Eba had his own child at age 34. Hele at age 30. Ryu at age 32. Sirog at age 30. Hebor. At age 29, when it got to the town of Tira, Abraham's dead. And look at the record now. And Tira, in verse 26 of Genesis 11, lived 70 years and begat Abraham. 70 years. That's a new era. On record. Their family lineage had their children between ages 29 and 36. But when it got to Tira's turn, delay set in and it continued for generations to come. I got a prayer for you. And the prayer is simply this May the Lord visit the year. That every battle commence in your family and rewrite your family history in the name of Jesus. I pray that prayer again. I said, May the Lord visit the year that every battle commence in your family and rewrite your family history. Tira had his first child at seven. That was about double the age. That the longest one had his own. The longest so far was 36 years old. But he almost doubled that 
before he had his own child. And it is from that point on that everyone that came after him in his lineage had delayed in having a child. You know, it is very curious to notice that according to John's Bible Dictionary of the Old Testament name, listen to Bishop, the name Tira actually means delay. Lord have mercy. Tira means delay. And as his name was, so his life was. And so was the name of his descendants. They were delayed and delayed and delayed. I pray for you. Whatever name they carried in your family in the past or in the present, if it adds to the battles in your life, may the Lord deliver you by fire. Whatever nickname they carried in your family in the past or in the present, if it adds battles into your life, May the Lord deliver you by fire. This guy, Tira, the name meant delay. And it was the one that first started having delay and having children. They handed it over to Abraham. And Abraham handed it over to his son. And his son also handed it over to his own son. Time will fail me, people, to tell you that after Abraham had his own illegitimate child at 86 and legitimate child at 100 the child that he had you know his name don't you Isaac Isaac was not spared either the same battle that Tira his grandfather had the same battle that Abraham his father had he inherited it. That's why I tell you we have gathered together today to talk about winning inherited battles. Look at Isaac. Isaac got married at 40. He had his first child at 60. What does that mean? 20 years. He had to wait to have his first child. It's in the Bible. Genesis. 25 in verse 20. The Bible says that Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Kandara, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Look at the next statement in verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And look at verse 26 of that same book of Genesis, chapter 25. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old. When she bare them. Wow. Got married at 40. Delayed till he was 50. You no know, Jewish writers even tell us that after 20 years of marriage, Isaac took his wife and went with her to Mount Moriah, the very place where Isaac was bound by his daddy, and he prayed that this child, this wife must conceive. He put the Lord in mind of the promise that he gave that there will be multiplication of Abraham's seed. How true that is. I leave that to the Bible historian. That was how Jacob was born. Unfortunately, Jesus, Jacob had his own share in great grandpa's battle. He also experienced delay in Rachel. Genesis 30 verse 1. When Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. 
Then Joseph was born. It was he, Joseph, hallelujah, who arrested this trend that started with terror and started and went into the life of Abraham and on and on until it got to Joseph. Joseph stood against it. Joseph stopped it because Manasseh, his son, was born without any delay whatsoever. I pray for you, my friend, that whatever battle has gone on in your family will come to an end with you in the name of Jesus. I also pray for you that by the blood of the Lamb, I reject in your life all satanic transfer and hand over from your ancestor in the mighty name of Jesus. I also command every unfinished parental battle to terminate from your life as from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me make a decree for you that these battles that you are facing, not only will they end with you, they will not be transferred to your children in the name of Jesus. I also make another decree for you that the powers that stop your parents will not be able to stop you in the name of Jesus. Joseph was the one at whom this thing stopped. I pray for you, the anointing to terminate generational battle. The Lord will give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. I also pray for you, that God will empower you to defeat the forces that defeated your dad, your mom, and your grandparents in the name of Jesus. Pray that God will give you power right now to win the battles your parents could not win. And any Asian battles in your family, any Asian battles in your father's house, in your mother's house, I Pray right now, they will terminate in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Lord will hear those prayers, will answer them for you, and will make sure those decrees are established for you in the name of Jesus. Well, that's about Sarah, that's about Abraham and his descendants. Winning inherited battle. Well, let me go on now and share with you one more incident of inherited battle that I found in the Bible. This thing is real. And these people that we are using as examples, they were not people that did not believe in the God of Israel. These were people that feared God. These were people that loved God. These were people in today's language that we would say were born again, were saved, and yet they had battles in heritage. This is serious. I'm taking you to a familiar text. If you have been around me, you know I've used this text many, 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 many times. Because this is an inherited battle that confronted someone and they had to find a way. Second Samuel chapter 21 in verse number one. Second Samuel 21. Listen to this story. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years. Year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul. And his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. That's true. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, 
And Saul sought to slay them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Let well, us read on. Wherefore did it said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? The Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that I will do for you. Now, if you are going through something, listen, that runs contrary to what the word of God says, then you need to do something about it. And that was what David did. But this is not right. This is not what the word of God promise of, promises of. We got to do something about it. So what I want you to do is to look into your life right now and ask the question, what I'm going through right now, is it for or is it against the word of God for my life? Is this for or against the promises of God for my life, and that answer shall come to you without you straining yourself. It is either yes or no. And David easily identified that the famine was contrary to the promise of God for an upright person. But the problem is this. They did not know the cause. How? Just like many of us cannot naturally figure out why we are going through what we are going through. Inherited battle. What did this happen? What caused it? Many issues that confront us really pull up. That's the truth. We can get it. Or we can say, well, I think this is the salt. I think that is the salt. And uh, we're just looking at the surface area and guess it. Don't do guess what with the origin of inherited battle. If you don't do something about it, it's not going to go away. The inherited battle will just stay in place. Let me tell you a classic example. I grew up a lady who says, woman of God, it's a pastor, and uh, I'm very close to her and to her husband. So I know both of them very well. But the husband has a problem, and the problem is the temper. That's a violent, terrible temper. He doesn't talk. But when he gets angry, oh my, you better run for pop. And the woman has suffered a lot. From the hand of this pastor. Until one day she came to herself and said, what, what could this be? Maybe I need to go ask God in order to know how to deal with this thing. So she went and prayed. And after a couple of days, she had a dream. In the dream, she saw an African masquerade dancing. And violently beating people up. And went to the house where her husband was born. Not knowing that that was the day they were doing the christening or the naming, we call it christening. They were doing the dedication of this pastor as a little boy. And that was why the masquerade came out. The violent masquerade came out to bless this new baby. So in the dream, she saw them in the house, carry the baby, give it to the masquerade, and the masquerade pronounced blessing upon this baby, that you will be like me, you will do this, you will do that, and handed the baby over to the mother. That was how he got the spirit of anger. And then he came to the world, he just found out that he had a violent temper. 
And then this lady woke up from her dream. And he had never shared this story with her before. So in the morning, she went to him and said, Honey, I saw a dream about you and your family. And he, she narrated the story to him. And he said, It's true. That he told him the story after he grew up. I said, Now we know what to do. We know what to go up. You know, it's, it's always good to go ask God. You know why? God is the omniscient one. He sees everything. But he knows everything also. What you will never know. God knows it. That was what David did. In Second Samuel chapter 21, in verse 1, then there was a famine in the days of David. Three years, year after year. Oh, by the way, that is how problems roll from generation to generation. That's how problems roll from generation to generation. That's how battles roll from generation to generation. It will just continue like that year after year until it counts you out and it goes to the next generation. Listen, my friend, go and find out from the Lord the root cause of what you are going through right now. There is a genesis to it. And just like every tree has a root, so does every inherited battle. Everything that is contrary to the word of God, everything that is contrary to the promises of God in your life, has a root. It's God. He knows. He's eager to tell you. Maybe I need to repeat what I just said. I said, ask God. He knows. Not only does he know, he's eager to tell you. You know, once upon a time, someone died. This is a true story that is connected to me. Someone died. And I asked God why. Because she was young, she was a young lady, she was a young mother, she was a young wife, and she just died just like that. So I was troubled. And I went to God. I said, God, why did she die? Because I went to see her in the hospital. The sickness that was on hand really kills anybody. And it just kills her just like that. So I said, I gotta find out this. So in the revelation, I was at her funeral. Okay? And she was lying in state in a casket. Right? Then suddenly in the revelation, this lady just Jump out of the casket. It was strange. You know how dreams are. And then she started dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing. And she danced to where I was standing. Backward. Everybody was running, but I stood there and said, what? What's going on? And then she called me by the name she normally calls me in real life. She called me by that name. I said, Yeah. She said, You know, I danced. Say yes, I know you done. That's why we're doing the funeral for you. She said, I want to tell you something before you bury me. I said, Say it. She said, You know that the sickness that killed me is not as bad enough as to kill anyone. I said, yes. So that's what I've been saying that when you die, when the sickness that killed you really doesn't kill people. She looked at me and smiled. And then she called me that by the name she calls me in real life and said, it is the work of the hands of Mr. So-and-so. She said, it's Mr. So-and-so that did it. He is the one that killed me. She mentioned the name of that person that was behind her death. Then, she danced and danced and danced 
and jump back into the casket and die the way. Then I woke up. And God said, that's the answer to your question. Now what am I going to do about it? I couldn't go and tell her husband that Mr. and so and so killed your wife. I couldn't go and tell her children that Mr. and so and so killed your, your mom. The name she gave me is still inside me till today. Can't say it to anybody. I'm just quiet about it. I'm telling you. What you don't know? God knows. And it can reveal to you the what, the who, the why, and the when the root of the problem that you have inherited began. David was smart. He said, it's been three years now. This thing will continue for another three years, for another 30 years. Why don't you go and find out this battle that you inherited? David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered. The Lord said, David, it is for Saul and for his bloody hand, because he still forgive you. My friend, I want you to learn from David. The best person to ask is God. Can I repeat that? The best person to ask is God. You know what amazed me here? He. David had prophets at that time. But David had enough relationship with God to hear from God directly. You know, we live in a generation of Christians who want others to do the hearing for them. Don't get me wrong, please. Don't get me wrong. There is a place for that in the Bible. But why don't you develop yourself so you can learn to hear God for yourself? You know what I said that? Many lives have been messed up by so-called prophets and seers of today. Many marriages have been destroyed Many families have been destroyed because of sin that are blind, that don't see nothing. Let me tell you, it's your wife that is bringing family into your house. It is your mother-in-law that is bringing family into your house. It is your this, it is your that. That is the reason for the family. And you know what it does? It just compounds the problem. You take as an enemy somebody with your best. Many prophets of today are prophet liars. And they have missed God. And they have kept many of us to miss God also. David, he didn't call the prophet. So I'll go directly to that. He went to his father. My sheep hear my voice. So he asked God. God said, the problem is not you, David. You are not the reason for the family. It is an inherited battle from King Saul. You know, I'm telling you, somebody who has lived and died can lead battle for you. I repeat, someone who has lived and gone to his own world can lead battle for you. And this can happen on the job also. Someone who hands over to you can lead battles for you. So David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered and said, Oh, the family, been waiting for you to come and ask. Did you know that God has been waiting for you to come and ask also? He said, Oh, yeah, it's not you, it's not your wife either, it's not your in law. It's Saul. 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 Well, Saul was somehow his in law too at the point. He said he's, he's tall and his bloody hand. Why? Because it's through the Gideon. That confirms what I said earlier in this time. What did I say? The issue you and I are facing right now may be from generations past. The battle may not belong to you, my friend, but 
may be as a result of the manager before you, the supervisor before you, the director before you, or the whoever before you, generation before you. But I'm the counsel for you, the good advice for you. Don't be satisfied with just knowing the root of it. Do you hear what I say? Don't be satisfied with just knowing the root of it. Very long before God to know what exactly happened. It is not enough to know that Saul is the reason for the famine. That's not enough. You need to know what Saul did. Papa, what happened? What did he do? Now you told me that he's, Saul is the one behind it. Saul is the reason for this. So what did he do? I you know what? God knows the details. God will give you the details if you ask him. So David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered and said, Oh, it is for Saul and for his bloody hand. What did he do? So bad. And he said, They killed the Gibeonite. The famine was because of Saul and because Saul killed the Gibeonite. That's an added information for David to deal with. You know why it is good to ask? I'll tell you what. On his own, there was no way David could have connected the problem to Saul. No way he could have connected the problem to Saul. Talk less of his treatment of the Gideon. Oh, by the way, did you know that there is no record in the Bible as to when and where? And why and how Saul killed the Gideon? Not it. Not in your Bible very well. You'll never see it where the Bible says Saul killed the Gideon. But God knew it. And God had that valuable information in his hand. And God never said anything. You know, God never said anything until David asked. If David never asked, God will have that information, and the famine will have continued and continued and continued. So, when God had valuable information, David knew what to do to end the famine. What ended the problem for David is what will end the problem for you. Seriously. Go and act. And once you know, go and do something about it. Do you know that prayer and fasting, oh Lord, remove this family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, remove this family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, remove this family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, remove this family in the name of Jesus. You will never have ended the time. He went to God. He said, I want three years now. What happened? No, you need to go and ask God. Here. You need to go and ask God. Here. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray for a turn around, for a breakthrough, for a change, and nothing has changed. Go to the great changer. Who knows why? And ask him, why are things like this, Lord? Please tell me why. That's all it is. And for knowing why and who is behind it, God told him what to do. You know what the solution for him was? Atonement. That was it. Atonement. He said, where did you find that, Bishop? It's in 2 Samuel 21, 3, that same chapter. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? Listen to this. What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that he may bless the inheritance of the Lord? He said, This thing has to be atoned for. These people he killed, these people he murdered. There must be an atonement. That's what you need to do. You need to do an atonement. So, Bishop, what do you mean by atonement? Well, relax. You are in a better position than David. Jesus has been made a curse for you and that curses 
can be broken. You can then take the details the Lord has revealed to you and take it to the foot of the cross. For every battle you have, for every problem that you have, for every situation that you have, everything has been covered in the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can break the curse. Because of the death, the resurrection of Jesus. Now, something very true, I'm going to tell you a story that will shock some of you right now. Something very true, but something very, very serious. It took place in Africa a couple of years ago. It actually took place in Martin, in Nigeria, a couple of years it happened in the eastern part of Nigeria. There was a hunter. All right. This hunter went out into the woods to hunt. Mistakenly, he killed the wife of a wicked man in the forest as he went hunting. Now, listen. The circumstances of the accident was very bizarre. And maybe it's only those of you from Africa and the Caribbean islands that will be easy for you to grasp it. But it is true. I will not sit here and lie to you. Those of us who grew up in Africa, and those of us like me who grew up in village environments, we can understand this happening. The wife of this wicked man turned into an antelope. Yeah. The lady turned into an antelope. And she went into the wood to graze on the So the father had his God, you know, the hunter. Looking for an animal to kill, and there it was an antelope pulled the trigger and killed the antelope. But amazingly, the antelope fell down and turned into a woman. He couldn't believe his eyes, and she, he had had stories like that. So, after killing the antelope, the antelope turned into a human being. You have to carry the woman. You, you kill the animal, you carry the animal. So he carried the lady. And he knew the lady, by the way, because everybody knew her husband to be a wicked man. So he carried the woman to her husband's house. And the hunter told them, this, this is what happened. It was an antelope I shot. But it turned out to be your wife. And the wicked man just smiled. And said, Don't worry about it, Mr. Hunter. It's not your fault. It's the fault of my wife. Go home in peace. It ended like that. Or at least that's what the hunter thought. And that's what the hunter's wife thought. They thought, Oh, this wicked man, he may not be as wicked after all. We think. How can he be so gracious as to let us go scot free? Well, Months turned into years, years turned into decades. The hunter died, and the wife of the hunter died also. True story. So the children also moved out of the village into the city. Most of the children even became born again, and seriously, most of them. Accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Some of them were going to Pentecostal churches. Some of them were going to evangelical churches. Two of them were going to a holiness church, a typical well known holiness church in Nigeria. But after they all grew up and they all got married, one by one, they started to die. One by one, they started to die. So one of them who went to a Pentecostal church went to a deliverance minister and said, look, 
But strange things are happening now. Finally, we're duck dying one by one. So the deliverance minister said, "Bring all your sickness." Well, the two of them who are attending the Holiness Church said they don't believe in deliverance, so they refused to go for deliverance. Only those other people who believe in deliverance went, but these two people that went to Holiness Church, they never went for the deliverance. Before long, one of them died. Just like that. Because others have died. Now, they went for deliverance. They stopped the death in the family. But the two that never came for the deliverance, one of them just died. <laughs> just like that. So when they saw that, the second one that went to the same church with this person quickly said, I'm going for prayer. I'm going for deliverance. And the deliverance minister said, call everybody again. This is what is killing you in your family. Your daddy offended someone many, many, many years ago as a hunter. He killed a woman mistakenly. They thought it was an antelope. It turned out to be a woman. The husband of the woman, being a very wicked man, has bewitched your entire family and generation to come. Did you hear what I said? He bewitched the entire family and generation to come. He carried out the type of bewitchment that is done by burial. He buried someone in your family backyard and until you uproot that thing from your family backyard, this problem will never, never end. True story. So he told them one by one you'll be done. So the children took the deliverance minister to the location of the family house. Which had already, of course, you know, it's in the beginning, it had collapsed and overgrown with wheat. I'm telling you, inherited battles are real. So they got to the village and said, This is the spot where our house was. And he said, Okay, God is telling me that the thing is buried in the backyard. So they went to the backyard and they began to dig the backyard. They began to dig and dig and dig. And they found evidence that uh, they left. Quickly and left in a hurry. They found parts, they had they found wooden spoons, it's like everybody just ran. So finally, as they were digging, they found a voodoo paraphernalia in the ground that they were digging. And he told them, he said, That's your problem right there. That's what the wicked man does to kill all of you. So they tried to grab it. True story. But surprisingly, the more they dug, the more the voodoo object also dug itself deeper into the ground. So this thing was running away from the digger, deeper into the soil. So they called the deliverance minister and told them it's simple. Go and open to Psalm so and so and read it as you did. And he told them that is the other guy now who was next to that. The guy who went to that the holiness church, he said, he said, you are the one to read the psalm. And that one said, I don't believe in reading psalms. Well, his brothers told him, the psalms not part of the Bible. Read what you need to read so you don't die like your other brother died. Are you not tired of death in our family? So he read the psalm, and guess what happened? Upon reading, the thing that was digging itself stopped digging itself into the ground and they were able to grab it. And the deliverance minister said, bring it to me in the next town. We'll do what we need to do, pray on it and burn it. So the day they were to carry this foolishness to him to pray on it and burn it, they had to cross a river, a big river, a well-known river. Lo and behold, every taxi that they entered broke down at the, end, at the entrance of the river. As they were about to cross the bridge and go on the river, the taxi will die. The taxi will go off. They will not know what is wrong with it. Not once, not twice, not thrice. Different taxi. 
And they said, this thing doesn't want to cross the river. Or. So they had to go to the deliverance minister who crossed the bridge to come and meet them where they were. And then they prayed on the string object. They poured anointing oil on it. They broke the power. And they put gasoline on it. And they bumped it. That was how the death stopped in the same place. My friend, you got to find out what is the reason and what is the solution. You got to deal with that. So don't forget the step you need to take if you have to win inherited battle. And I'm quick with your over. Identify the problem. Ask the Lord for the root cause. Ask the Lord why the root cause cause the problem. And then use the information that you get to plot a strategy for escape. And hand the whole thing over to the atonement made by Jesus Christ on the cross of time. And that was what it did. They identified the problem. People are dying. People are dying. People are dying. They asked the Lord for the root cause. They found out what the daddy did. Uh, mistakenly, but there is a voodoo guy. And a Jew and voodoo paraphernalia in their backyard. Right? That's what is causing the problem. So, when they stopped it, they go and uproot it. They uprooted it. And they prayed on it. And they did over to the atonement of the blood of Jesus Christ. And they took it and consumed it. And the death came to an end. Do you know what inherited battles are doing in your life? So they can be broken. They can be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I wish I had more time. A prayer for you is very simple that God will give you the victory over all your heritage, whatever they are. Joseph taught his own, David taught his own. By the grace of God, you shall taught your own also in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you and God bless you. Bye.